by the bucket on the counter you may be able to see that it has thawed out enough now that I can actually have running water coming out of my garden hose so I don't have one here to show you but I have some big cat litter jugs big cat litter jugs that I fill up with water and usually bring in the house because if I leave them outside they'll freeze solid to bathe and to do dishes and you know non-drinking water for drinking water I have these I take them to the filtering machine, the reverse osmosis filter, it's 25 cents a gallon, and that's for coffee and stuff, because if I use just regular old water around here, let me see if I got one I can show you. Yeah. Try to tilt this, but I don't know if you can see it. Uh, can you see the white rim around that? That uh, white rim is just from water standing in the pot, not from being boiled. So there's a lot of minerals in the water here. Okay, so yesterday I went to Albuquerque for my MRI and uh, did a little shopping and dropped off the box. Uh, these were on sale. Pound of uh, lunch meat. Whoa. You can get really good stuff. I got a loaf of fresh. I mean fresh out of the oven French bread. After I got done shopping, I went over to their little lunch counter and I made me a sandwich right away. This was still warm out of the oven. Here's some day old uh, poppy seed bagels. Look at that. So I got uh, about three of those things lunch meat. So uh, the rest are frozen. Oh, the other thing they had real Parmesan cheese. Like you gotta grate it yourself. Real Parmesan cheese. Mark down real cheap. And those are in the freezer because I also got one of these cheapies. That's Parmesan cheese and, of course, you know, salt and garlic and yada, yada, yada. So, you know, you want to doctor something up and make it edible. Just a plain old can of tomatoes with a little bit of cheese on top and whatnot. Plus, look at this giant box of donuts. <laughs> it's full of donuts and pit. Well, it was full, but I kind of went ate shit last night. Anyway, I don't see the price on them, but... Uh, Three dollars, three dollars for over a dozen donuts and pastries. A whole case, which is 12 packages of fresh blackberries Beca at uh, Sunflower Markets. They sell really good stuff. They do have organic stuff. They also uh, have a commitment to selling local goods and uh, regular commercial. Their produce department is excellent. Regular commercially produced foods, but... Uh, really good quality at really good prices so if you're if you have access to a sunflower market I don't make any money off of telling you this but their meats are expensive they're kind of hippy dippy uh, you know gourmet deli what do I call that uh, boutique groceries like Whole Foods and that crap you know they're into that but uh, you, there's there's working class eats there boys and girls and uh, they're worth buying and there's a lot of people of color low income people elderly there's a um, senior housing project nearby and they could go to Smith's which is where I got that other stuff it's a grocery chain they could go there it's not it's not it's about the same distance but buddy they there's a lot of low-income people spending their food stamps at Tell's Bar because you get good value another thing I got at Smith's and I was just starting to run out and they put it on sale just when I was starting to run out this looks like an excessive amount of cheese doesn't it grated but look who's who's by whoop Oh, baby. Now, this is medium cheddar. But Tillamook knows how to make cheddar cheese, so even the medium has a bite to it. This is a five pound sack of cheese. It cost me $11, so that's just over $2 a pound for good cheese. And what I do is I put it in little zippy sandwich bags. I buy the really good ones that are really thick with one of those pulley things so I can open them easily without ripping the top. I pack them real tight, squeeze the air out, freeze them. And a bag like that will last me about six months or more. So with my little canned, uh, I never buy canned beans. I always buy them, you know, I always make them myself. But, oh, this can's dirty, but I'm going to show you anyway. No, I'm not, because it's really dirty. Uh, but I got a whole case of refried beans for 25 cents a can. I thought, shit, that's easy, because all I got to do is cut the lid open, put in a butter knife, um, smear them on a, on a tortilla, with some cheese, little leftover whatever meat's laying around, or chicken, or 
uh, 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 even fish, man, fish, fish burritos, dude, some canned tomatoes, a little bit of salsa, whatever's laying around, you know, just wrap it up in the tortilla, makes a good cheap lunch, um, easy to warm up in the oven, I don't like using my microwave too much, for one thing, it shorts stuff out, and the microwave on, and the heater on, boom, power goes out, uh, Plus, uh, you know, microwaves are microwaves, you know. So I've got this little oven. Look, here's my oven. Right now, I'm using it to store the cheese so the cats won't eat it. And the chicken, too. I better put that chicken back. Ooh. Oh, the other thing I got to make a sandwich with yesterday. I got that deli meat, like I said. And then they've got these. Oh, look at this. Look at this, baby. Spicy sprouts. Good price. Put some of that on it. Cut a little piece of that French bread, put some of that uh, lunch meat, put some of those spicy sprouts, and then this was, I should never have done this, but it's so good. And look how much money, oh my God. Can you imagine how much it was at full price? This is uh, a very spreadable cheese. I'm not wearing my glasses, so I can't tell you what kind of cheese, but it's a lot like brie. At room temperature, it's a lot like brie. Let me hold it up to the camera, see if you can see that. See that? Ooh. It's not like cream cheese, it's like brie. It's like good cheese, you know, like gooey, sexy cheese. And the dark spots are walnuts. So I had on fresh out of the oven French bread. Dude. Walnut cheese, uh, deli, is this hammer turkey? This is Messia. That's why it tastes good. Mmm, I mean mesquite, not Messia. Mmm. Mesquite is a kind of wood that grows out here, and it's very popular to cook with because it smokes the meat and gives it a, um, I can't describe the flavor. I can't describe the flavor. It's one of the best smoking woods around. In fact, it, to buy charcoal, I don't mess around with those off of cats like Kingsford. And I don't mess around with that stuff because who knows what's in them, plus there are professional charcoal factories, and you know, charcoal is a problematic uh, cooking tool anyway because it's about burning trees <coughs> what I do I go to the Mexican grocery stores and you get a bag oh, about that big big old heavy bag full of real um, mesquite charcoal still looks like a tree you know it's not doesn't look like a pillow or a pill uh, and that's what I keep around because baby it's worth it. It's worth it. And it costs about the same. Mexican charcoal costs about the same as commercial American charcoal. So if you can get to a Mexican grocery store and buy Mexican charcoal, don't fool around with that other shit. Well, sometimes, once in a while, I get a really, really good deal on uh, American charcoal that you can't pass up. But, like, the bag got ripped, and so they mark it down to almost nothing. You know, that kind of thing. Or sometimes I find it in the trash. Uh, so you can mix the mesquite charcoal with the cheapy charcoal and it's like you went to the fanciest restaurant Albuquerque okay so that's some of what I got plus there's god there's cheese in the freezer and uh, oh quiches I got two quiches I got it they had more than I bought but you know it's eggs and cheese I shouldn't be a lazy bitch I should make them myself because eggs and cheese are cheap but they have these quiches I got a quiche Lorraine Mm -hmm. And I got a spinach cage. Both of them have ham. So those are in the freezer. So I had a really good breakfast because I stopped at the uh, Smiths on the way to Albuquerque, which is one of the best Smiths, frankly, in the state of New Mexico. Um, for markdown stuff, particularly, you see what they mark down. They also mark down dairy. They mark down uh, butcher. Anything that is uh, perishable, they will mark it down before they throw it out. I mean half price. So one time I went into a Smith's down in Los Lunas and they'd had uh, my favorite steak, ribeye, on sale for uh, $5 a pound over Valentine's Day for a romantic dinner. Well, I walked in after Valentine's Day and there was a family pack. Ooh, goes off the screen. Huge family pack of ribeye steak that had started out on sale. You hear where I'm going with this. At about Four or five dollars a pound. Dude, two dollars and fifty cents a pound for ribeye. Ribeye. I bought fifty pounds. 
to my whole food stamps budget from the previous month and the current month. And I bought those steaks. I brought them home. I gently patted them dry. I mean, I cleaned off the counters and stuff with uh, bleach before I even opened the packages. I didn't want any contamination. They also had mushrooms on sale, so I sauteed some mushrooms. And each steak was put in a very nice Ziploc bag once it was completely dry uh, with some sauteed mushrooms that I'd sauteed in butter, Worcestershire sauce, and onion. Highly recommend. Oh, with lots of black pepper. I highly recommend that. Uh, so each steak got a little dab of that. And they were all dried flat. I mean, frozen flat in my freezer behind me. And they lasted a year. They lasted a year. I did the same thing recently. It wasn't that cheap. It was $4 a pound. I bought a whole prime rib. Again, backing up a whole prime rib. Brought it home. Cut it into steaks. Again, bleach on the counter. Perfect utensils. It's like surgery. You really have to do it right. And I've got steaks in there that will last me probably through the end of summer. That was about 16, 20 steaks, something like that. So that was the shopping trip. And uh, anything else really good that I got? Nah, I think that's about it. Excellent produce, excellent produce. I got uh, yeah, 10 pounds for $10 of really good oranges, not cheap ones. Uh, really good oranges, really good varieties of apples, really good pears. I got boss pears, you know, those dark blood red pears. A dollar a pound. God, cucumbers were on sale. So I got plenty of fruits and vegetables. I'm a little scant on animal protein, but I've got uh, peanut butter. I've got tahini. I've got my beans. I've got, you know, I can I can supplement. Uh, my food stamps budget is just about blown for the month. The blackberries are going to get frozen. So then I can make pancakes or something. Just whip out a thing of blackberries to put on top of them instead of craptacular uh, pancake syrup. I'll have... What is going on with my hair? Anyway, I have something decent, so it'll actually be food, you know. Um, pancakes, you can mix stuff into them, like a little bit of cottage cheese, a little bit of cream cheese, something like that, to give them a little extra uh, protein. Oh, I got cottage cheese on sale, too. I just remembered that. So the shopping was excellent. I did two trips to Smith's, one in the morning, and that got me uh, most of the protein items I've missed it, mi uh, mentioned, plus the donuts and the bread. And then when I went back, they had the chicken and some other things on sale. So it's it's worth it to stop twice because, you know, they, ah, it was a Monday. The trucks had just come in. They had to get rid of the surplus stuff, leftovers from the weekend, stuff people hadn't bought. I'm going to burn my coffee. So Monday's a good day to do that. But early in the morning, not way early, like 10 o'clock in the morning after they get start getting their act together and the truck is in and they're starting to uh, get organized. Just walk through and look for those orange stickers, man. Lots of grocery chains do that. So, you know, Walmart doesn't. What a rip off. Jesus. I mean, you talk about those designer boutique grocery stores like Whole Foods and that kind of crap. And the local co-op. God, if I had to eat out of that local co-op, I'd starve in a minute. Yeah, I'm going to have a bunch of hippies coming and leaving comments now, but whatever. Uh, let's see. Boutique foods. Uh. Walmart does that. They get you in there and you think you're getting value and shit. Last time I was there, they wanted a, what, four or five dollars for a gallon of milk. And I'd just been to Smith's where it was two gallon jugs for five bucks. Okay, same milk. Full of hormones and antibodies and, I mean, antibiotics and garbage. You know, same milk. Nice toxic shock milk. Mm, but Smith did, does also mark down their fancy milk, their organic stuff, and I got goat's milk. I got goat's milk. I got a pint of goat's milk at Smith's one day. God. All right, so I'm cleaning up the dishes because it's finally thawed out enough so that I can. And uh, I did wash my hair yesterday morning. Uh, I had just enough water. God bless it. See, here's my, um, this is the pot that I use to take a bath. Whoa. Right now, because there's about a week's supply of dishes, it's um, boiling water so I can wash dishes. I mean, a week's supply. There's a, a five-gallon bucket right under here. There's a little one-gallon bucket over here. There's this bucket that's got all my utensils and silverware and stuff. It's been intense. Okay, so the box got mailed. Oh, I forgot the best thing I got. This is one of my favorite things in the whole world. And I can never afford them. Look at this. They're pickled in brine instead of old sour vinegar. That's a $4 jug of pickles, dude. 
I got three of them on sale. And Nathan's was, uh, they were featuring these little smoky links made by Nathan's. It's a three pound package. It's three one pound packages. You can cut them apart. For um, holiday parties, they've never seen them before. You know, little pound packages, these little, and you know, I love hot Nathan Tatas. I love Nathan Tatas. So I'd been looking at them, but damn, they were six, they were, they were like uh, eight dollars, eight or more, maybe ten, for a three pound package. And I thought, oh, God, that's three bucks a pound. That's more than I pay for steak. So no, I didn't get any. Well, in the deli department yesterday, they had a package of those smoked um, hot dogs marked down little. Okay, we need so they're in the freezer. So right now I'm working on that chicken and some leftovers that are in my regular refrigerator and making sandwiches with that deli meat and stuff like that. And then uh, once the dishes are washed and I can use my crock pot again, I might I might make a pot of homemade beans. And uh, got enough food for the month. I got enough food for the month. And my order of appearance with this fresh fruit is. Eat the most fragile first. The pears aren't quite ripe yet, so I can't eat them yet. So I'm working on my blackberries, which are a little underripe, but that's okay. Uh, so then the pears first, and then start working on the apples and the oranges. So it was an excellent and productive shopping day. Um, plus, I've still got my corn chips out there and those spice drops. You remember I told you I got those spice drops? Oh, I got some cookie mix, and I'm going to, um, I'll show you how I make spice drop. I make, um, Stained glass cookies with ice drops and cookie mix. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Anyway, it's some, that Pillsbury, one of those logs. It's in the freezer. And because I've got all these donuts and I don't, you know, I'll eat that stuff first and then we'll make, worry about making cookies. Oh, and I got butter on sale. Unsalted butter, my favorite. Ugh. See what I mean about real tobacco? you got to fire these up repeatedly just to get them to smoke because they don't have any gunpowder in them to make them burn up quick. Whatever the hell they put in cigarettes. Okay, so the box. Oh, boy. I'm just going to go ahead and say this, all right? It may seem very frivolous, but I don't do uh, luxuries. I don't have a <laughs> we got disposable income. I saved for about three months to send that box. And I knew it wasn't going to be cheap. I had no idea I'd cram 25 pounds worth of shit in that box. It's not shit. It's good stuff. It's like, woo, it's a party in a box. 25 pounds of stuff. Now, the actual cost of the stuff was maybe, well, I added two things that, that brought the cost up by six bucks. But you'll understand why. I can't tell you what they are because the person who's getting the box is going to see this. Um. But the contents of the box are, I'd say, around 20 bucks, And that includes food that I got on food stamps and the stuff that I got at the thrift stores, including some free stuff for me after Christmas, giving away everything Christmassy stuff. So the contents are cheap. Shipping it. The cheapest way to ship stuff to the United Kingdom from the United States is uh, United States Postal Service. I went to one of those mailboxes, etc., places that uses uh, other courier services like FedEx, UPS, DHL. He was convinced that DHL would probably be the cheapest way to uh, ship it to UK. Uh, DHL wanted $300. He about fainted. He about, he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I thought we could really do this. So he couldn't do it from his shop because who the hell knows? Because it's the United States Postal Service. But there's a, a cheapest way to send things. I had to lie about the contents. I did have to say it was books. In fact, I said it was books and fabric. And it almost got bumped by the, by the supervisor at USPS. Because she said, no, it has to only be books. And I said, but I'm using the fabric instead of like bubble wrap and stuff to keep the covers from getting scratched. I'm not stupid. So, okay, then. What they do is, I don't have a sack. Yeah, I have a sack kind of like this. Uh, they put it in like a... One of these kind of sacks. Did you see this? Let me get that. See, it's that woven 
recycled like uh, milk carton plastic. Uh, oops, like sandbags, like sandbags. That is huge bags. So it's being shipped in a bag, and it's going to take about two weeks because I think they're just going to drive it to the ocean and shove it in and push it. I, you know, uh, I mean, it could have been there in a week if I'd bought it an airplane ticket. Yep. So, it'll take a minimum of two weeks for it to arrive in Great Britain. Now, the problem is that this extra El Cheapo rate is more prone to customs inspections. And I lied and said it's books. And it's wrapped in paper that's lined in mylar, so... And there's, like, those insulated lunch bags with mylar um, insulation. So I don't think it's going to go through an x-ray machine. And I think they're going to have to bust it open. That's why they put it in those bags, you know, so that when they go through it in customs, they can just throw it all in the bag and because they're not going to repack the box. So it's a good thing I videotaped the box while I could, because I don't think it's going to look like that by the time you get it, if you get it. And if Customs hasn't helped themselves to the contents, particularly, I will tell you one thing I got you. Beautiful little bottle of tequila. Completely illegal. Highly wrapped up and very deep inside the box. So I have a feeling the tequila is going to go to the Customs Department. So the minimum it'll take for it to get to UK is two weeks, and then God knows what's going to happen once it hits customs. I'm sorry. It's all I could do, because DHL would have cost more than I pay here for rent. I'd saved up money, but I hadn't saved up that kind of money. Regular United States Postal Service would have been, um, the cheapest rate would have been where they wouldn't have taken it through customs. It would have just right to your mailing address, that would have cost uh, about half a month's rent. No, almost almost $200. Almost $200. Yeah. So, this cheapest rate where it's in a gunny sack and going to get slung all over a boat, and then God knows what's going to happen to it when customs gets a hold of it. I'm sorry I'm saying God. No, I don't believe in God. Uh, the very cheapest rate was $89. So it's on the way. So I don't do luxury stuff, but if you people have seen that video I made about letting yourself love, now do you think this is a priority, people? Do you think this is um, essential for basic human health? No, I didn't have to send the box. I can love her just fine without sending the box. There's, I have legitimate reasons for having sent it. Not just to impress her and that kind of stuff. I have, uh, I have reasons. I have good reasons. You can either respect that or not. So, basically, I'm e-begging, and anybody wants to kick in on, um, the shipping of the box, I have a PayPal account. Private message me. Not you. Don't go there. This is a present. You're not paying for your own present. Uh, if it hadn't been so rainy and snowy, I could have done some of my paper mache and maybe auctioned something off in exchange for um, begging for money. But today is the first really warm day. It's still really muddy out. It's slushy. There's piles of there's sheet ice all over the place where the snow has melted and is the ground so saturated that you could skate out there, and I have been. Uh, still lots of frost and mud is so thick this is so unusual for new mexico that literally weasel can sink this deep in the mud weasel little weasel and my truck has gone down in fact my wheels got frozen to the ground one day because the mud and the slush came up around the tires froze overnight i had a hell of a time getting out of here so working outside is not happening and if i don't get these dishes and stuff cleaned up i'm not going to have any room to work in here so uh if you want to help out with the box, excellent. But not you. Don't worry about me. I'll be okay. I've got enough food to last a month. Bills are paid. There's gas in the truck. Not that I'm going anywhere for the rest of the month, because where would I go, you know? 
Um, not you. Don't worry about it. I wanted to do this. I wanted to do this a lot. And you and Brian are going to have a ball. So. Don't feel guilty. I knew going into this. You know, it's not like I didn't check the postal rates. I went to the post office and asked them. That's back when I thought the box might weigh 10 or 20 pounds. So I knew what I was getting myself into. I also know that I don't know how to weigh things. I don't know how to measure distances, heights, you know. So I just figured it weighed about as much as a bag of dog food. And most bags of dog food weigh about 15 pounds, the ones I buy anyway. So I figured, you know, I mean, I could lift it without screaming. Kind of hard to pull it out of the back of the truck, though. Uh, so it's on its way. Don't know what it's going to look like by the time it gets there. <laughs> It suddenly occurred to me, oh my god, they've got people over there blowing up subways and shit in London and England's going to be a lot more paranoid and, than I remember. And So I hope I will put you on the equivalent of an English FBI file, Scotland Yard, whatever, because that's all you need. So I have a tracking number and stuff and uh, I'll send it to you. <laughs> so we did our shopping I got the oh the MRI the MRI they will not tell me when I go in for any kind of medical procedure how what what this is going to do what what effect this is going to have on my body they won't they treat you they treat now we're supposed to be consumers and we're supposed to participate in our own care they even call us consumers now not patients because we're supposed to be in partnership with the medical establishment. If you ask any questions, they treat you like you're an obnoxious little child. They're patronizing, condescending. I couldn't get any straight information out of these people. Oh, you might have an allergic reaction to the dye. Well, would that be anaphylactic shock? No, it'd be something else. So finally, when she said she was going to inject the dye, I said, listen to me. Here's where to find my car keys. Here's where to find my truck. There are two live dogs in that truck. If I have to be hauled out of here by ambulance, somebody needs to take care of my dogs. And here's where to find my dog's leash. And here's which dog is going to cooperate and here's which dog is not. I mean, the chances of anything happening are very rare, but shit, man. I had two dogs in the truck. It's cold out there. They were parked under a tree. So... Uh, What I did was, as soon as I got on the table, and they wouldn't even tell me how loud it was going to be. Yeah, I was wearing the earplugs, and they had foam pads, and she jammed these foam pads and pulled my hair. See, I tried wearing my hair forward, so I'd have, because, you know, I have this big skillet head, and I thought, oh, it'll look pretty all fluffy and curly, and wear my hair forward. Don't do that if you go for an MRI, and here's why. They have this forced air that goes through the tube. I think they do that so that it'll be... It'll be a psychological effect of it being less claustrophobic if you feel fresh air. It's a cold day, and they're blowing cold air on me, and I'm wearing this short-sleeved uh, scrub gown, and it's fucking cold, man. And they've got me in this machine, and she's jammed these pillows and pulling my hair out right by the ears where it's real tender, you know. And uh, then there's this forced air blowing on my face, and don't move your face. Oh. So this ear went to sleep. You know, I told you my ears go numb. Well, this year went to sleep, and it was burning and hurting really badly, and I couldn't move. Um, and this year was tingling, and my hair was fluff fluff fluffing around my face. And she wouldn't even, I kept saying, let me know when there's a break so I can scratch or cough. There were several times when she had to take breaks to recalibrate the machine. I know she was, but I didn't dare move, and she didn't tell me. 40 minutes. And that forced air was so dry, it was beginning to affect my sinuses, and I was having difficulty breathing. Then this really interesting thing happened. They injected this dye. Now, this is after I'd been in there for, I don't know how long. There's not a clock in the place. But I've been in there. I've been in there. And then they injected the dye, and they threw me back inside. It's like having a head in a toilet. It's disgusting. Um, a cross between a toilet and a um, escalator at an airport with the lights, you know, very plastic, fantastic. Anyway, so she put me up under it again, and that dye went through me, and two things happened that are not supposed to happen. 
You're not supposed to have any kind of physical reaction to this at all. There's not supposed to be any sensation. Two things happen. Intense burning as though somebody had strapped a rubber band around my head. Intense. And then the other thing, and I kept, you know, I'm so proud of myself. I was so self-disciplined. I did not move. Uh, during the first part of the test, I went to the ocean in Pacific Grove. I went to the bunny trail. I went to this big flat rock that I used to go to on an old train track in Pacific Grove that is now a walking trail. Huge, big, flat boulder where I would sit and write in my journal or meditate. And a family of white-tailed deer came up to me. And the buck acted like he was going to charge. He, he, they didn't notice me. I was so quiet when I sat down there. They just They were already feeding, and I sat on the rock. And he wasn't aware I was there. I must have been downwind. And they kept uh, coming closer to the rock. Finally, he realized I was there. And he was going to hurt me. And I looked him dead in the eye. And I didn't move. I didn't adjust my breathing. Nothing. I didn't turn my head. I didn't blink. I looked him right in the eye. He put his head up and he smelled. He thought about it for a minute, and he cocked his horns at me, his antlers. And he pawed the ground. He flicked his tail. And then he turned back to his doe and the baby. And he just gently nudged them, gently nudged them away from the rock. Stood a few yards away and watched me out of the corner of his eye while his family was eating. We stayed like that for a long time. So I went to that place. I made the mistake of... Um, <laughs> I made the mistake of... Uh, remembering some people that I have loved. And um, remembering some um, particular instances of intimacy. Uh, don't think about anything sexual while you're getting an MRI. You want to smile and do other things with your face. It's amazing how much we use our facial, facial muscles. So I had that burning in the last part of the test. It was burning like a strap, like a rubber band too tight burning. And then this other thing happened. Now I was calling out to Kate. I'm not a metaphysical person, but Kate has a very strong mind, and it comes from a lot of meditation, and she says some things about that that... Kate's not a liar, and I know it's all anecdotal evidence, and it's her own personal experience, and she is not, um, she's not a fake and a phony. And I can't explain her experiences. I, I don't know if she's lying to herself. I don't know if what's really happening is happening. I know she has an extremely strong mind. She um, is very committed to Buddhist practices. She's not a Buddhist, but she's very committed to uh, the mental discipline. And I started calling out to Kate, just in case, you know, I, just like a Skype call. Either she'll answer or she won't. It might have been her. I'm at almost 99.999999999% sure it wasn't. It might have been her. And it could be physiological, but again, the testers told me that this doesn't, the people performing the test told me that this doesn't happen. I saw it. Now, I know it was in my optical nerve because I get migraine headaches, and I learned many years ago that where my optical nerves see things behind my eyes um, because I would test it because I'd get these little twinkly things. They're like um, cubist art, very iridescent, shimmery. Um, and I would close one eye, and then I would close the other eye, and I could see that it was still in my field of vision. That I could see it back here, somewhere back here, behind the temple. Yeah, that's about bisecting it. So it's kind of where the optical nerves join up with the um, brain itself. So I know where those things are. It's different than floaters. Floaters are kind of in the field of vision, optically, sort of, they look like they're in front of your eyes. They're actually inside the optic nerves, but they they are, they just look like they're closer. 
oh, or in front of you. Or inside the eyeball, perhaps. Because floaters will... This eye won't see what this eye sees. So it wasn't floaters. Well, I saw something yesterday that I've never seen before. It wasn't that cubist neurological alarm thing that I get before a migraine that blinds me because um, it's in the middle of my field of vision. So all I have is peripheral vision. This was a tiny blue dot. It was like a little sphere. And if I had to guess, I'd say it was no bigger than a pinhead. It was very, it, it was like it was either very far away or extremely small. It was three dimensional and it was iridescent blue. I mean like phosphorus. And it stayed there. It didn't drift. It stayed right there. And I could see it through the floaters and the other, you know, neurological stuff that happens. I could see it. It was there. And then it winked out. Oh, no, you didn't see that. Okay. Or maybe other people just don't pay enough attention to what's going on with their experience to be able to recognize differences like that. It's very subtle. The band up here and the thing. Anyway, so I did all that, and I came home early. As soon as the test was over, I stopped at one more store and headed back out this way on an almost empty tank, got into the next town before mine where the goodsmiths is got a little bit of cheap gas there got a few more groceries and i was here before dark so if you want to subsidize my insanity great if you don't i don't blame you some people are worth it i don't have anything else i have to spend money on this month I got to pay my um, trailer payment and my truck payment, and that's it. <laughs>